We're here at New York City's most iconic restaurant. Max, we're literally on a sidewalk. Okay, we're outside New York City's most iconic restaurant. And today we're gonna figure out what they do to make their steaks so good and justify a Michelin star. And when we're done with the taste test, we're gonna go back into the kitchen and see if we can recreate a steak that's better than theirs. Let's get started. Okay, first things first, we need to get to the steakhouse. Ooh, it's nippy. And you might be wondering, why are we doing the steak review outside? The reality is I've gotten kicked out of so many restaurants at this point that it just makes more sense. And it's also kind of fun. Luckily, it's only like a 15 minute walk. Okay, we've made it to Peter Luger Steakhouse. Gotta say, I'm pretty excited for a steak right now, but it's right over there. Let's go find a place to camp out. This should work. Okay guys, we are right outside of Peter Luger Steakhouse. We got some graffiti in the background, the full on New York experience. Let's go order this steak. Yeah, can I please place an order for the two person porterhouse, medium rare? Okay, online, no problem. Thank you. Okay, apparently you can only order online. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna get the cream spinach, the Luger bacon, and the steak for two. Go with well done. Psych! Medium rare. All right, should be 30 minutes. We got the goods. The only thing left to do was set up shop. And as usual, poured myself a nice glass of red. Okay, starting with this bacon here. That looks amazing, super thick cut. The steak is still warm, which is a good thing. All right. Um, it's a big old steak. And at this point, I was really working against the clock. It was about 38 degrees Fahrenheit, which needless to say is not ideal steak eating conditions. All right, it is time to eat. I gotta say, this steak looks absolutely incredible. However, if the steak is anywhere near as cold as my hands, it's probably freezing at this point. But either way, let's check this thing out. So this right here is a porterhouse. We have that filet and the strip loin right here. And as you can see, a really nice, beautiful medium rare, which is hard to do, especially for a delivery steak. But what's most distinctive by far, check out that crust. I don't know if you guys can hear it since we're outside amongst the uh, tra traffic, but that is a ridiculous crust on this side. Let's check out the other side. So as you can see, significantly less of a crust on the bottom. Seems like they sort of sacrificed this side in order to get this crust, uh, but it looks delicious. And for the bacon, we have this ridiculously thick cut. This looks insanely good. Check out the thickness of it though. I've never seen bacon that thick. thick. And I think for now, I'm gonna start by tasting that bacon. It definitely has like a grilled flavor. I'm not sure if it was over charcoal or like really high heat, but it's a nice crunch to it. And yeah, just a great piece of bacon. Now, because we're healthy, of course, we got the cream spinach. I think this is healthy. I like the bacon better. No now we're just gonna go for a slice of the filet. That is pretty good for a sidewalk steak. I mean, that's pretty good for any steak. Extremely tender, which you kind of expect with the tenderloin. That crust, again, is just top notch. It's also quite buttery in flavor, in a good way, I would say. I think they're probably using butter or like clarified butter, but that is phenomenal. Now for a piece of that strip. Can't lie, the steak is very cold right now, but it's still delicious. Starting to get a little more of those dry aged flavors on this side, but I gotta say, easily the best steak I've had for one of these steak reviews so far. Really the only negative I can find with this is that lack of a crust on the bottom, but I understand they have their own technique. Can't really complain too much with this quality. Of course, just having a sip of my wine. This is a 2022 Welch, an excellent vineyard. All right, well, at this point, genuinely cannot feel my hands, but have to say, phenomenal steak. Let's head back to the kitchen to cook our own steak for a final side-by-side -side comparison to see who comes out on top. <laughs> Okay, we are back in the kitchen. I have officially defrosted my body. It's time to cook our steak. Now for the taste test, my sister's going to be the taste tester. It's gonna be a complete blind reaction. My steak versus Peter Luger's. Let's check this thing out. So believe it or not, this steak here is from Peter Luger's dry aging room. You can actually buy them online. So this is gonna be perfect for our comparison. And this steak right here is a porterhouse. Different from a T-bone in the fact that it has this really big tenderloin. With a T-bone, it has a similar shape, but this filet side is way smaller. But as you can see, the marbling on this is just incredible. It's a super thick steak and it is dry aged. You can see here how it has some of that discoloration. Now I did some research and found that Peter Luger cooks their steak in a 
a very unique three-step process. They season with just salt and start by grilling it for four minutes aside. The next step, they take it out before being fully cooked and slice it. Lastly, they add some clarified butter, put it back into a ridiculously hot grill to get that crazy crust over the top. Luckily, I do have a grill contraption that I think can give us a similar crust, but first we're gonna do something that's very uncharacteristic for this channel. We're gonna make some spinach. So cream spinach is a steakhouse staple. For some reason, I order it every single time I go to a steakhouse. So we're gonna make it and it all starts with a bunch of spinach. So the water's essentially boiling and we're just gonna pour in all of the spinach. Oh man. <laughs> you guys tell I'm more of a uh, meat guy than a vegetable guy here. And we're just gonna let it cook for about 30 seconds just to soften up. Once it's nice and wilted down, we're gonna move it over into some ice water. And this step is gonna stop that cooking process. Then we're just gonna squeeze out as much of that water as we possibly can. And just like that, three packages of spinach have shrunk into one little ball. I assume this is what vegans eat as meatballs, but either way, it's pretty tiny. We're just gonna add some butter to the pan, that melt down. Gonna add in some onion, and just gonna let this cook for about five minutes to soften up. Gonna add in some garlic, let that cook for another minute. Now in with our milk, some heavy cream, and some cream cheese, all of which seem to be ingredients that are gonna kinda counteract the healthiness of our spinach, but we shall see. Once that cream cheese is melted, we're gonna hit it with some salt, some black pepper, a little bit of chili powder. We're gonna add back in our spinach. I'm gonna hit it with a bunch of Parmesan. Just make it rain the Parmesan. You get this all mixed up. All right, I have to say our cream spinach is actually looking really good. Now I'm no expert on cream spinach, but I have a feeling this might beat out the steakhouses. Either way, let's get started on that steak. Okay, for the steak, we're keeping it nice and simple just like they do at the steakhouse. So I'm not actually positive if they use this during this step. However, this is clarified butter, which is essentially just butter that doesn't have the water or milk fats. So it does have a higher smoke point and really nice flavor. We're just gonna start by painting some on. Hopefully it's gonna help with crisping up the steak and sort of acting as a binder. We're just gonna get both sides. Next, we're gonna be adding some kosher salt. And I'm just getting both sides as well as those edges. Okay, so our steak is all seasoned up. It looks amazing. I just ordered the comparison steak for delivery to my house. Should be here in probably like 30 to 45 minutes. So while they're making theirs, let's get ours on the grill. For step one, I started on the gas grill in an attempt to recreate Peter Luger's process. And even though I had the heat all the way up, I wasn't really expecting a great crust. I was just starting the cooking process over some fire. And after flipping frequently, I pulled it off. And step one of the cooking process is complete. I pulled it off probably around 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so still very rare, basically raw. But let's slice it up. I started by removing the filet, and as you can see, very rare still. Next, I removed the strip side. There's this bone that comes up here. If you go around it, sort of higher than you would think, just come right off. Next, I sliced up both sides of the steak, doing my best to keep the thickness as close as possible to what I had at Peter Luger's. And I have to say, the smell at this point was already incredible. But we're not done with the cooking yet. Next, I laid down another layer of that clarified butter and added the steak. Okay, so I'm very happy that our steak actually fit on this little tray, but let's get it on the beefer. This little grill here gets over 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, which should be very close to the industrial broilers at the restaurant. And literally within 20 seconds, the crust on that steak was sizzling away and ready to go. And I just finished by pouring some of those drippings right over the steak. All right, so overall, I am extremely happy with this steak. As you can see, the strip is cooked just perfectly. We have that really amazing crust on top, quite similar to what we had at the steakhouse earlier today. The filet, actually, the filet, I thought it was overcooked. It doesn't look terrible. Maybe a little bit closer to medium on the sides, but sort of expected when you're cooking a porterhouse. So just visually, I would call this a huge success, but the delivery steak just showed up, so it's time for the taste test. Can't lie, guys, this looks absolutely perfect. I'm a little worried right now. Tibby wants steak. Tibby. Oh no. Does that mean he likes my steak more? Okay. Now my steak. 
Right off the bat, I can tell that the Peter Luger steak definitely has a stronger crust. However, mine's still looking pretty good. But as you can see on the bottom, both steaks are dealing with the same situation, pretty much no crust. And the only thing left to do was find out which steak was better. And for the blind taste test, it's time for my sister Sophia to do the honors. Okay, so for the taste test, we have my lovely sister Sophia here. Uh, now I don't have one of those like sleeping eye things, so we're using a tie. I'm very nervous. You're nervous? Whose steak will be better? Okay, can you see? Nope. Okay, so we have two forks, each with identical pieces from the exact same side. She doesn't know which one she's getting first, but here we go. My stomach is grumbling. We're gonna start with <clears throat> this one. Cheers. This is the filet side. Super tender, literally melts in my mouth. A little bit of the crust too, that's nice. All right, and steak number two. Number two. I guess right off the bat, can you taste any significant differences between the two? I like the crust and the flavor of number one over two, and I think number one was slightly more tender. Overall, I like one the best. Really? It, okay, we gotta try that one more time from okay. the strip side. Like, it was significantly better. This one was trickier. I think I preferred the second. Wow, once again, that was ours. This is a shocking situation. I was prepared to lose. That was part of my whole script. Well, there it is. We beat the steakhouse this time, though I will say it was their meat. There's also sat in a to-go box. So lots of variables at play here, but either way, thank you, Sophia. I appreciate it. Thanks for having your, me. I appreciate Thanks your help. Thanks for the steak. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.